candidate for the mayor of DeKalb. I'd like to thank uh, Brett and Eric and Kevin and all those who made it possible for this event tonight. I'm 59 years old. I just turned 59 the other day, and as you can see, I did age as well as candidate for Seekers. I'm a little bit older than her with one more experience. Um, I want, first thing I want to tell you is that I am a, a resident of DeKalb. I was born here, educated here, and I stayed here all my life. I raised a family here. When I, uh, when I was a young man, where some of you are probably staying in the dorms right over here, I bailed hay, so that really gives away my age. But I've got some different views on, on the future of DeKalb. Um, while I agree with candidate Fasikas, 2008 was a disaster. We've got away from any personal touch or the, the downtown area. When we started out with renewing DeKalb, it was a good idea. I thought it was a good idea. But the city of DeKalb was 138 parcels of land. We weren't able, with our budget crisis, which seemed to be basically ignored, we weren't able to hire needed police and firemen. We're below OSHA standards, the National Firefighters Association, the government surveys have told us that we are not in a safe area with not four firemen on our, on our fire on our thing. I have all the statistics for you, which we'll study later. I don't want to take up all the time with that. But our administration has not lived up to what they were elected to do. It's that simple. In the editorial in the paper last night, the city council and the administration uh, and the Reno Decal was given uh, credit and a nice thing for uh, thinking outside the box in the editorial. And their statistics, their numbers in there were seventy-four thousand dollars for our ice pellets on their skating rink. Mm -hmm. Problem is, they didn't talk to you about the three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars that was added to the property, the three hundred twenty-five they bought it, or the forty-five thousand with EPA to get the tanks out to get it back up to standards. Yes, it's a piece of property that we needed for Renew Decal, the cornerstone. Absolutely. But I'm not sure on the, on the figures when they said that there was 12,000 visitors, visitors there this year in three months because I've been there all the time. And we're not getting the true picture, which is the case many times from this administration, when they say it's a $74,000 investment to be paid back, which will cover in five or six years. That's just for the putting the rink in, not the cost of the property or the mortar on the side of the wall or anything else that happened. There's a lot of those things, a lot of questions like that that the people in this community and this university are asking, and we need to get the answers for those questions. Um, we had a, you know, with the hiring freeze, we didn't get the firemen and policemen that we needed, yet we had the money, because it was a co-sponsored thing, a 50-50 split, to put an employee there to charge admission and get uh, the skates, the whole thing for our, our ice palace down there. Not a real big facility. When I was a child in this town, raised here all my life, educated here, we skated at Normal Pond, and if you didn't have skates, you went to the fire station and signed them out on loan, and then you took them back. Now, I understand with the dredging of the pond that there wasn't communications back and forth, and because uh, they were worried about the ice freeze, I don't think anybody communicated with Northern Illinois University and tried to work out a deal there. I don't know, but those kind of things need to be talked about. I think that we don't have, I think that the city administration is out of touch with the heartbeat of this community. There's too many things that go on. They just make their own personal agenda decisions and not what's in the best interest of this community. How can we afford in this present day and age, as Candidate Prezikas has said, when people are having trouble making their mortgage payments, to raise, put an $84 a year fee on your water meter to pay for a police station that we don't need? When I was a senior in high school in 1968, they built a municipal, municipal building, a police station, right on the corner of 4th, 4th Street, where it currently sits. That was phase one. That foundation was put in to go up two more floors. Phase two was to buy all the structures in that city block and turn it into city parking, with the idea they could put a parking garage up or improve the structure now existing. After 40 years, of mayors and city councils and make good decisions, they decided to not buy that property, to not go with phase three, and buy the property out on West Lincoln Highway for a new police station. That police station, first of all, they can't ride through the railroad tracks, and it was to take care of the north side up here, where the attorneys and sororities are. They have to go all the way off the end of Glen Road or First Street to go north to get back in there. 
that's a busy lane. I know that you've all traveled it on a Friday night. You can't get in and out of it. And if that property is worth five hundred, okay. If that property was worth five hundred eleven thousand dollars an acre, how could we afford to take it off the tax rolls? How could we afford to take off the tax rolls? We have an existing police substation at the fire station on Dresser Road, right in that area, that's never been opened up. Those questions need to be asked. That's why there's so many people running. And I'm glad to talk to you at any time I can. And thank you again.